Hello and welcome to polyplane.com. One of the most intelligent things I learned when I was beginning the 3D model was, if it's wrong, do it over. That's from Scott Rittiger. It doesn't take as long as you think it does to redo a piece of your model. Now normally I don't like to do modeling demonstrations that are quick and voiced over, so I'm going to do this at regular speed just so you can kind of get where I'm going. So I found this this graphic of a, of a key off of a keyboard from psdgraphics.com. And what I've done is I've removed the letter and cropped it down nice and tight to what I want for an underlay. What I want to show in this video is the idea of doing something correctly. It's very easy to just speed through a 3D model and be like, yeah, that's good enough, which is often totally acceptable and fine. However, if you're going to invest part of your workday into doing something, why not take the time to do it right? This will improve your accuracy and your speed because you're forced to slow down, take your time and work methodically, and with a plan. So what I want to do is I just want to show how modeling a single key off of a keyboard can sort of be a, it's a good exercise in learning how to pace yourself. So I have my underlay here and I'm going to go into Rhino and import this in. So what I do is I type picture frame. It allows me to select a, an image here. And now a, a normal key is like about a half an inch squared. So I'll make this 0.5 by 0.5 inches. And now I've got this, this image to work on top of. Now I can do this a couple of ways, but I want, I want to show you the quick way to do it and then the more precise and controlled way and show you what kind of results you get on either side. So if I were to quickly go through this, I would probably make a cube, so 0.5 by 0.5 and then like about quarter inch tall. Realizing that I'm not really working for my, any references here, I can kind of get away with it and I can say, okay, well, that radius in the corner looks about 0.04. We haven't gone over a lot of the tools that I'm going to be using here to quickly do this, but that's not the point of this. The point of this is the basic mindset that you're taking to get the result you want. So, okay, uh, now looking at this from perspective, I can see it's a little bit tall, so I might uh, scale it down. I'm out of an eighth of an inch. And then, okay, so I know that there's kind of like a, a taper that makes that second face. So what I'll do is I'll just explode this and then turn on its points here and uh, let's say right about there, grab all those points and then scale them 2D and then bring it in until it looks about right and join them. Um, so, okay, this is kind of kind of bad I mean you've got seams that are kind of funky I mean it's just it's not a good situation as a matter of fact I would have to go back and rebuild all of these broken faces and realistically a button's not shaped like this so let me just make a quick patch here okay and then rotate that or actually we'll mirror it And what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of going back and fixing all my mistakes. Now, this is not good. I mean, I wouldn't present this to a client. It doesn't, it doesn't look right because, you know, some of my faces are off. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a misalignment of where stuff is going. So now, what if I actually took the time to do this right? And, you know, realistically, it shouldn't take much longer than what I've produced here, and it'll actually be correct. So, you know, that, that maybe took me two and a half, three minutes max to make. So let's go back. I'm really going to analyze this form. So we know it's about a half an inch by half inch square and it's got rounded corners. So I'll go with the rounded corner rectangle tool and just kind of do this right. So I've got that one. There's a secondary one. So what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste this in place and then scale it in two dimensions. And right about there. And I can see it's not exactly lining up perfectly. So what I'll do is just kind of adjust it into place here and maybe a little bit more. And by doing this, I'm actually setting myself up for a much better result. So now when I move this up the eighth of an inch that it, for its thickness, okay. 
And you know what? When you look at a key on a keyboard, it usually has some sort of cupping going on. And by cupping, I mean it, it's sort of the face is bent uh, in a way to re better receive your finger when you're typing on it. So let's add a bend to that. So I'll just type bend. And I have up here, I have symmetry turned to yes. So that's why it's bending from both sides. And we'll say about there from that view and then that. Okay, that's, that's looking good for that top face. And um, now I want to make sure that both the curves have the same point count because I'm going to loft them. So what I'll do is I'll just type rebuild and make those 100, 3 degree, okay. And now loft them. And what I've done is I've given myself a much more accurate um, overall view of this thing. So to create the top face, what I'll do is just do a quick patch, uh, 20 spans and U and V. That looks good. And then I can just join those and cap it on the bottom. And then if I look back at the top view in the actual underlay here, there's sort of a little bit of a soft soft radius going on where those two faces meet. So what I'll do is just fill at the edge 0 0.010 or so. Nice. I'm going to copy this and then undo everything I just did and get my other version of the model back and paste it. Okay, so now that we have both of these side by side, which one is obviously better done? Needless to say, it's the one on the right. And both of them took about the same amount of time to do. Maybe the, the one that was a little more accurate took a little more time. But look at the quality difference. You know, if, if I was to be asked which one of these was more likely a real computer key, I'd probably say the one on the right. That isn't to say that there isn't one that, you know, there isn't a key out there that's totally flat and follows this, but this one was done with a little more patience and control. So keep that in mind when you're doing your, your models. By practicing just a little more patience with yourself, your skills will improve and you'll be able to do a much better job. I've shown a lot of operations in this video that we haven't gone over yet or you might be unfamiliar with. Um, don't worry about that. I just want you to take in this basic principle of doing something with a little more patience. And as I, as I begin to cover other tools, keep this in mind when you're going through. Is this, is this the easy way to do it or is it the right way to do it? Sometimes they're the same answer. Sometimes they're not. And it also depends on the output that you want. From this far away, more than likely you're not going to notice the difference. But if you need to do something up close, sometimes it's worth doing it the right way versus doing it with half effort. So take your time, work methodically, and if it's wrong, do it over. It'll take a lot less time than you think to redo a part of your model. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.